Hello viewers. Today we are talking about the Boeing 737. Please subscribe to our channel if you like this video, so let's go. The Boeing 737 is a narrowbody aircraft produced by Boeing at its Renton factory in Washington. Developed to supplement the Boeing 727 on short and thin routes, the twinjet retains the 707 fuselage cross-section and nose with two underwing turbofans. Envisioned in 1964, the initial 737 to 100 made its first flight in April 1967 and entered service in February 1968 with Lufthansa. The lengthened 737 to 200 joined service in April 1968. It evolved through four generations, offering several variants for 85 to 215 passengers. The 737-100 and 200th's original variants were powered by Pratt & Whitney JT-8D low-bypass engines and offered 85 to 130 passengers seating. Launched in 1980 and introduced in 1984, the 737 Classic minus 300 and 400ths, 500 variants were upgraded with CFM 56 to 3 turbofans and offered 110 to 168 seats. Introduced in 1997, the 737 Next Generation minus 600 and 700s, 800 and 900 variants have updated CFM 56 to 7S, a larger wing and an upgraded glass cockpit, and seat 108 to 215 passengers. The latest generation, the 737 Max, 737 the 7th or the 8th of September 10 Max, powered by improved CFM LEAP-1B high bypass turbofans and accommodating 138 to 204 people, entered service in 2017. Boeing business jet versions are produced since the 737NG and military models. As of January 2022, 15,068 Boeing 737s have been ordered, and 10,906 delivered. Its main competitor was the McDonnell Douglas DC-9, MD-80, MD-90 derivatives. It was the highest selling commercial aircraft until surpassed by the competing Airbus A320 family in October 2019 but maintained total deliveries. The 737 MAX, designed to compete with the A320neo, was grounded worldwide following two fatal crashes between March 2019 and November 2020. Development of Boeing 737. Initial design. Boeing studied short-haul jet aircraft designs and saw a need for a new aircraft to supplement the 727 on short and thin routes. Preliminary design work began on May 11, 1964, based on research that indicated a market for a 50-60 to 60 passenger airliner flying routes of 50 to 1,000 miles, or 100 to 1,600 kilometers. The initial concept featured podded engines on the aft fuselage, a T-tail with the 727, and five abreast seating. Engineer Joe Sutter relocated the machines to the wings, which lightened the structure and simplified six abreast seating in the fuselage. The engine nacelles were mounted directly to the underside of the wings, without towers, allowing the landing gear to be shortened, thus lowering the fuselage to improve baggage and passenger access. Relocating the engines from the aft fuselage also allowed the horizontal stabilizer to be attached to the aft fuselage instead of a T-tail. Many designs for the engine attachment strut were tested in the wind tunnel. The optimal shape for high speed was relatively thick, filling the narrow channels formed between the wing and the top of the nacelle, particularly on the outboard side. At the time, Boeing was far behind its competitors, rival aircraft in service Shea 210 Caravelle and development, the BAC 111, Douglas DC-9, and Fokker F-28, were already into flight certification. To expedite development, Boeing used 60% of the structure and systems of the existing 727, the most notable being the fuselage, which differs in length only. This 148-inch, or 3.76 meters wide fuselage cross-section permitted six abreast seating compared to the Rivals five abreast. The 727's fuselage was derived from the 707. 
The proposed wing airfoil sections were based on those of the 707 and 727, but somewhat thicker. Altering these sections near the nacelles achieved a substantial drag reduction at high Mach numbers. The engine chosen was the Pratt & Whitney JT8D1 low bypass ratio turbofan engine, delivering 14,500 lbf, or 64 kN thrust. The concept design was presented in October 1964 at the Air Transport Association Maintenance and Engineering Conference by Chief Project Engineer Jack Steiner, where its elaborate high-lift devices raised concerns about maintenance costs and dispatch reliability. Major Design Developments of Boeing 737 The original 737 continued to be developed into 13 passengers, cargo, corporate and military variants. These were later divided into what has become known as the four generations of the Boeing 737 family. The first, original, generation, the 737 to 100-200, also the military T-43 and C-43, launched in February 1965. The second, classic, generation, 737-300, and 500 series, established in 1979. The third generation, NG, series, 737-600, minus 700, minus 800, and 900 series, also the military C-40 and P-8, launched late 1993. The fourth generation 737 MAX series, launched in August 2011. Launch of Boeing 737. The board made the launch decision for the $150 million development on February 1, 1965. Lufthansa became the launch customer on February 19, 1965, with an order for 21 aircraft, worth $67 million after Boeing had assured the airline that the 737 projects would not be cancelled. Consultation with Lufthansa over the previous winter had resulted in the seating capacity is increased to 100. On April 5, 1965, Boeing announced an order by United Airlines for 40737s. United wanted a slightly larger capacity than the 737 to 100, so the fuselage was stretched 36 in, or 91 centimeters ahead of, and 40 in, or 102 centimeters behind the wing. The more extended version was designated the 737 to 200, with the original short-body aircraft becoming the 737 to 100. Detailed design work continued on both variants simultaneously. Introduction of Boeing 737. The first minus 100 was rolled out on January 17, 1967, and took its maiden flight on April 9, 1967, piloted by Brian Weigel and Lou Warlick. After several test flights, the Federal Aviation Administration issued Type Certificate A16WE certifying the 737 to 100 for commercial flight on December 15, 1967. As part of its initial certification, it was the first aircraft to have approval for Category 2 approaches, which refers to a precision instrument approach and landing with a decision height between 98 to 197 feet, or 30 to 60 meters. Lufthansa received its first aircraft on December 28, 1967, and on February 10, 1968, it became the first non-American airline to launch a new Boeing aircraft. Lufthansa was the only significant customer to purchase the 737 to 100, and only 30 aircraft were produced. The minus 200 was rolled out on June 29, 1967, and had its maiden flight on August 8, 1967. It was then certified by the FAA on December 21, 1967. The inaugural flight for United Airlines took place on April 28, 1968, from Chicago to Grand Rapids, Michigan. The lengthened minus 200 was widely preferred over the minus 100 by airlines. The improved version, the 737 to 200 advanced, was introduced into service by all Nippon Airways on May 20, 1971. The 737 original model with its variants, known later as the Boeing 737 original, 
initially competed with Shea 210 Caravel and Back 111 due to their earlier entry into service and later primarily with the McDonnell Douglas DC-9, then its MD-80 derivatives as the three European short-haul single aisle slowly withdraw from the competition. Sales were low in the early 1970s and, after a peak of 114 deliveries in 1969, only 22,737s were shipped in 1972, with 19 in the backlog. The US Air Force saved the program by ordering T-43s, modified Boeing 737-200s. African airline orders kept the production running until the 1978 US Airline Deregulation Act, which improved demand for six abreast narrowbody aircraft. Demand further increased after being re-engined with the CFM-56. The 737 became the highest-selling commercial aircraft until surpassed by the competing Airbus A320 family in October 2019 but maintained total deliveries. Before being moved by rail to Renton, Boeing spin-off company Spirit Aerosystems manufactured the fuselage in Wichita, Kansas. Generations and variants of Boeing 737. 737 Original, or First Generation. The Boeing 737 Original is the name given to the minus 100 and 200 and minus 200 advanced series of the Boeing 737 family. 737 to 100. The initial model was the 737 to 100, the minor variant of the 737 aircraft family, launched in February 1965 and entered service with Lufthansa in February 1968. In 1968, its unit cost was 3.7 million United States dollars, 27.5 million dollars today. 30,737 100s were ordered, 22 by Lufthansa, 5 by Malaysia Singapore Airlines, and two by Avianca, with the final commercial aircraft delivered to MSA on October 31, 1969. The first aircraft used by Boeing as a prototype under registration N73700 was later ordered by and had to NASA on July 26, 1973, which then operated under registration N515NA and retired after 30 years on September 27, 2003. This was the last operated 737 to 100 and is the only remaining worldwide, which is on the static display in the Museum of Flight in Seattle. The original engine nacelles incorporated thrust reverses taken from the 727 outboard nacelles. They proved to be relatively ineffective and tended to lift the aircraft off the runway when deployed. This reduced the downforce on the main wheels thereby reducing the effectiveness of the wheel brakes. In 1968, an improvement to the thrust reversal system was introduced. A 48-inch tailpipe extension was added, and new, target-style, thrust reverses were incorporated. The thrust reverser doors were set 35 degrees away from the vertical to allow the exhaust to be deflected inboard and over the wings and outboard and under the wings. The improvement became standard on all aircraft after March 1969, and a retrofit was provided for operational aircraft. Boeing fixed the drag issue by introducing new longer nacelle, wing fairings, and improved the airflow over the flaps and slats. The production line also enhanced the flap system, allowing increased use during takeoff and landing. These changes gave the aircraft a boost to payload and range, and improved short field performance. 737 to 200. The 737 to 200 was a 737 to 100 with an extended fuselage, launched by an order from United Airlines in 1965 and entered service with the launch customer in April 1968. Its unit cost was US$4 million in 1968, now $29.8 million today. The 200's unit cost was US$5.2 million in 1972, now $32.2 million today. The 737-200 Advanced is an improved version of the minus 200, 
introduced into service by all Nippon Airways on May 20, 1971. After aircraft number 135, the 737 to 200 advanced has improved aerodynamics, automatic wheel brakes, more powerful engines, more fuel capacity, and hence a 15% increase in payload and range over the original 200s and respectively 100s. The 737 to 200 advanced became the production standard in June 1971. Boeing also provided the 737-200C, which allowed for conversion between passenger and cargo use, and the 737-200QC, or quick change, facilitated a rapid transformation between roles. The 1095th and final delivery of a minus 200 series aircraft was in August 1988 to Zeeman Airlines. 19737-200S, designated T-43, were used to train aircraft navigators for the U.S. Air Force. Some were modified into Court 43s used to transport passengers, and one was limited as the NT-43A radar test bed. The first was delivered on July 31, 1973, and the last on July 19, 1974. The Indonesian Air Force ordered three modified 737-200s designated Boeing 7372X9 surveyor. They were used as maritime reconnaissance, fitted with slammer, or side-looking multi-mission airborne radar. The aircraft were delivered between May 1982 and October 1983. After 40 years, in March 2008, the final 737-200 aircraft in the U.S. flying scheduled passenger service were phased out, with the last flights of Aloha Airlines. The variant still sees regular service through North American charter operators such as Sierra Pacific. With the improved short field capabilities of the 737-200, Boeing offered the option of the gravel kit modification features preventing foreign object damage, which enables this aircraft to operate on remote, unimproved, or unpaved runways, such as gravel runways, that other similarly sized jetliner cannot. Until retiring its minus 200 fleet in 2007, Alaska Airlines used this option for some of its combi aircraft rural operations to serve many unimproved runways in Alaska. Gravel kitted 737 to 200 Combus are still used by Canadian North. Air Inuit, Nolanor, and Chrono in northern Canada, where gravel runways are common. In July 2019, 46 Boeing 737-200s were in service, mostly with second and third tier airlines and developing nations. 737NG, or third generation. The Boeing 737 Next Generation, abbreviated as 737 Next Gen or 737NG, is the name given to the main models 737 minus 600 and 700s, 800 and 900s series and the extended range minus 700 a 900 ER variants the Boeing 737 family. It has been produced since 1996 and introduced in 1997, with a total order of 7,097 aircraft, of which 7,031 have been delivered as of May 2019. The main development was to re-engine with the high-pressure ratio CFM 56 to 7. By the early 1990s, while the MD-80 slowly withdrew from the competition leading to the introduction of the MD-90, it had become clear that the new A320 family was a serious threat to Boeing's market share, as Airbus had won previously loyal 737 customers such as Lufthansa and United Airlines. In November 1993, to keep the hand in the single-aisle competition, Boeing's board of directors authorized the Next Generation program to upgrade the 737 Classic Series mainly. In late 1993, after engineering trade studies and discussions with major customers, Boeing proceeded to launch a second derivative of the Boeing 737, 
the 737 next generation, or NG-600 and 700s, 800 and 900 series. It featured a redesigned wing with a wider wingspan, more extensive area, greater fuel capacity, more extended range, and higher MTOW. It was equipped with CFM 56 to 7 high pressure ratio engines, a glass cockpit, and upgraded interior configurations. The four main models of the series can accommodate seating for 108 to 215 passengers. It was further developed into versions such as the corporate Boeing business jet, BBJ, and military P-8 Poseidon aircraft. Following the merger between Boeing with McDonnell Douglas in 1997, the primary competitor for the 737NG series remained only the A320 family. 737 to 600. The 737 to 600, the small model of the next generation, was launched by Scandinavian Airlines, or SAS in March 1995, with the first aircraft delivered in September 1998. A total of 69 aircraft without winglets have been produced, with the last one delivered to WestJet in 2006. The 737-600 replaced the 737-500 and is similar to the Airbus A318. 737-700. The 737-700, the first variant of the next generation, was launched in November 1993 with an order of 63 aircraft. The minus 700 seats 126 passengers in a two-class or 149 passengers in a one-class layout. The launch customer Southwest Airlines, took the first delivery in December 1997. The 737-700 replaced the 737-300 and competed with the Airbus A319. The 737-700C is a convertible version where the seats can be removed to carry cargo instead. There is a large door on the left side of the aircraft. The United States Navy was the launch customer for the 737-700C under the military designation C-40 Clipper. The 737-700er or extended range was launched on January 31, 2006, and featured the fuselage of the 737-700 and the wings and landing gear of the 737-800. A 737-700er can typically accommodate 126 passengers in two classes with a range similar to the Airbus A319LR. 737 to 800 the boeing 737 to 800 was a stretched version of the 737 to 700 launched on september 5 1994. the minus 800 seats 162 passengers in a two class or 189 passengers in a high density one class layout launch customer happy lloyd flug or Twifly received the first one in April 1998. The minus 800 replaced the minus 400 and aging 727 to 200 of US Airlines. It also filled the gap left by Boeing's decision to discontinue the MD-80 and MD-90 aircraft, following Boeing's merger with McDonnell Douglas. The 737-800 is the most widely used narrowbody aircraft and competes primarily with the Airbus A320. 737-900. The 737-900 was launched in 1997. It retains the MTOW, fuel capacity, trading range for payload, and the exit configuration of the minus 800, limiting its seat capacity to approximately 177 in a two-class and 189 in a high-density, one-class layout. The launch customer, Alaska Airlines, received the delivery on May 15, 2001. The 737-900ER means extended range is the newest and largest variant of the 737NG generation. 
an additional pair of exit doors and a flat rear pressure bulkhead increased its seating capacity to 180 passengers in a two-class and up to 220 passengers in a one-class configuration. The 900ER was introduced to meet the range and passenger capacity of the discontinued 757-200 and to compete with the Airbus A321 directly. 737 MAX, or fourth generation. The Boeing 737 MAX is the name given to the main MAX 737 the 7th or the 8th of September 10 series and high-density MAX 200 variant of the Boeing 737 family. It is offered in four main variants, typically offering 138 to 230 seats and a range of 3,215 to 3,825 nautical miles or 5,954 to 7,084 kilometers. The 737 MAX 7, MAX 8, or including the denser, 200-seat MAX 200, and MAX 9 replace the 737 to 700, minus 800, and minus 900 respectively. The further stretched 737 MAX 10 has also been added to the series. The main development was to re-engine with CFML EAP-1B very high bypass ratio. On July 20, 2011, Boeing announced plans for a third major upgrade and fourth generation of 737 series to be powered by the CFML EAP-1B engine, with American Airlines intending to order 100 of these aircraft. On August 30, 2011, Boeing confirmed the launch of the 737 new engine variant, to be called the Boeing 737 MAX. It was based on earlier 737 designs with more efficient LEAP-1B power plants, aerodynamic improvements, and airframe modifications. It competes with the Airbus A320neo family that was launched in December 2010 and reached 1,029 orders by June 2011, breaking Boeing's monopoly with American Airlines, which had an order for 130 A320neos that July. The 737 MAX had its first flight on January 29, 2016, and gained FAA certification on March 8, 2017. The first delivery was a MAX 8 on May 6, 2017, to Lion Air's subsidiary Malindo Air, which put it into service on May 22, 2017. As of January 2019, the series has received 5,011 firm orders. In March 2019, aviation authorities worldwide grounded the 737 MAX following two hull loss crashes which caused 346 deaths. On December 16, 2019, Boeing announced that it would suspend production of the 737 MAX from January 2020, which was resumed in May 2020. In the mid-year of 2020, the FAA and Boeing conducted a series of recertification test flights. On November 18, 2020, the FAA cleared the MAX to return to service. Before the aircraft can fly again, repairs must be implemented, and airlines training programs must be approved. Passenger flights in the US are expected to resume before the end of the year. Worldwide, the first airline to continue passenger service was Brazilian low-cost Gol, on December 9, 2020. 737 MAX 7. The 737 MAX 7, a shortened variant of the MAX 8, was initially based on the 737 to 700, flying 1,000 nautical miles, or 1,900 kilometers farther, and accommodating two more seat rows at 18% lower fuel costs per seat. The redesign uses the 737 to 8 wing and landing gear, a pair of over wing exits rather than the single door configuration, a 46 inch longer, or 1,200 mm aft fuselage and a 30-inch longer, or 760 mm longer forward fuselage. Structural re-gauging and strengthening, and systems and interior modifications to accommodate the longer length. 
Launch operator Southwest Airlines was expected to enter into service in January 2019, but the airline deferred these orders until 2023-2024. The 737 MAX 7 replaced the 737 to 700 and was predicted to carry 12 more passengers and fly 400 nautical miles, or 740 kilometers farther than Airbus A319neo with 7% lower operating costs per seat. 737 MAX 8. The MAX 8, the first variant of the 737 MAX, has a longer fuselage than the MAX 7. On July 23, 2013, Boeing completed the firm configuration for the 737 MAX 8. Malindo Air operated its first commercial flight on May 22, 2017. The MAX 8 replaced the 737-800 and competed with the A320neo. The 737 MAX 200, a high-density version of the 737 MAX 8, was launched in September 2014 and named for seating for up to 200 passengers in a single-class layout with slimline seats requiring an extra pair of exit doors. The MAX 200 would be 20% more cost-efficient per seat, including 5% lower operating costs than the MAX 8, and would be the most efficient narrowbody on the market when entering service. In mid-November 2018, Ryanair's first MAX 200 of the 135 ordered rolled out in a 197-seat configuration. It was first flown from Renton on January 13, 2019, and was due to enter service in April 2019. 737 MAX 9. The 737 MAX 9, the stretched variant of the MAX 8, was launched with 201 aircraft in February 2012. It made its rollout on March 7, 2017, and its first flight on April 13, 2017, it was certified by February 2018. The launch customer, Lion Air Group, took the first MAX 9 on March 21, 2018, before entering service with Thai Lion Air. The 737 MAX 9 replaced the 737-900 and competed with the Airbus A321neo. 737 MAX 10. The MAX 10 was proposed as a stretched MAX 9 in mid-2016, enabling seating for 230 in a single class or 189 in a two-class layout, compared to 193 in two-class seating for the A321neo. The modest 66 in, or 1.7 meters stretches of fuselage enables the MAX 10 to retain the existing wing and CFM Leap 1B engine from the MAX 9 with trailing link main landing gear as the only significant change. The MAX 10 was launched on June 19, 2017, with 240 orders and commitments from more than 10 customers. The variant configuration with a predicted 5% lower trip cost and seat cost compared to the A321neo was firmed up by February 2018, and by mid-2018, the critical design review was completed. The MAX 10 has a similar capacity as A321XLR, but a shorter range and much poorer field performance in smaller airports than A321XLR. It was unveiled in Boeing's Renton factory on November 22, 2019, and scheduled for the first flight in 2020. Boeing also considered a parallel development along with the 757 replacement, similar to the 757 and 767 in the 1970s. In the late 2010s, Boeing worked on a medium-range Boeing new midsize airplane with two variants seating 225 or 275 passengers and targeting the same market segment as the 737 MAX 10 and the Airbus A321neo. A future small airplane was also touted during this period. The NMA project was set aside in January 2020, as Boeing focused on returning the 737 MAX to service and announced that it would be taking a new approach to future projects. Design of Boeing 737 
The 737 continued to evolve into many variants but remains recognizable as the 737. These are divided into four generations, but all are based on the same basic design. The airframe of Boeing 737. The fuselage cross-section and nose are derived from the Boeing 707 and Boeing 727. Early 737 cockpits also inherited the eyebrow windows, positioned above the main glare shield, a feature of the original 707 and 727 to allow for better crew visibility. Contrary to popular belief, these windows were not intended for celestial navigation. With modern avionics, the windows became redundant, and many pilots placed newspapers or other objects in them to block out sun glare. They were eliminated from the 737 cockpit design in 2004, although they are still installed on customer request. The eyebrow windows were sometimes removed and plugged, usually during maintenance overhauls. The metal plug differs from the smooth metal in later aircraft that were not originally fitted with the windows. Under the wings at mid-cabin, the 737's main landing gear rotates into wheel wells in the aircraft's belly. Partial doors cover the legs, and, brush-like, seals aerodynamically smooth the wheels in the wells. The sides of the tires are exposed to the air in flight. Hub caps complete the aerodynamic profile of the wheels. It is forbidden to operate without the caps, because they are linked to the ground speed sensor that interfaces with the anti-skid brake system. The dark circles of the tires are visible when a 737 takes off or is at a low altitude. From July 2008, the steel landing gear brakes on new NGs were replaced by Messier Bugatti carbon brakes, achieving weight savings up to 550 to 700 pound, or 250 to 320 kg depending on weather standard or high capacity brakes. On a 737 to 800, this gives a 0.5% improvement in fuel efficiency. 737s are not equipped with fuel dump systems. The original design was too small to require this, and adding a fuel dump system to the later, larger variants would have incurred a large weight penalty. Boeing instead demonstrated an equivalent level of safety. Depending upon the nature of the emergency, 737s either circle to burn off fuel or land overweight. If the latter is the case, the aircraft is inspected by maintenance personnel for damage and then returned to service if none is found. Engines of Boeing 737. Engines on the 737 Classic Series means minus 300, minus 400, minus 500, and next generation series means minus 600, minus 700, minus 800, minus 900 do not have circular inlets like most aircraft but rather a platform on the lower side, which has been dictated mainly by the need to accommodate ever larger engine diameters. The 737 Classic Series featured CFM56 high bypass turbofan engines, which were 25% more efficient and reduced noise significantly over JT8D low bypass engines used on the 737 original series means minus 100 and minus 200, but also posed an engineering challenge given the low ground clearance of the Boeing 737 family. Boeing and engine supplier CFM International solved the problem by placing the engine ahead of the wing and moving engine accessories to the sides of the engine pod, giving the 737 Classic and later generations a distinctive non-circular air intake. The wing also incorporated changes for improved aerodynamics. The Engine's accessory gearbox was moved from the 6 o'clock position under the engine to the 4 o'clock position. This side-mounted gearbox gives the machine a somewhat rounded, triangular shape. Because the engine is close to the ground, 737 300s and later models are more prone to engine foreign object damage. The improved, 
higher pressure ratio CFM 56 to 7 turbofan engine on the 737 next generation is 7% more fuel efficient than the previous CFM 56 to 3 on the 737 classic with the same bypass ratio. The newest 737 variants, the 737 MAX series, feature LEAP-1B engines from CFMI with a 69 inches or 1.76 meters fan diameter. These engines were expected to be 10 to 12 percent more efficient than the CFM 56 to 7B engines on the 737 Next Generation series. Flight systems of Boeing 737. The 737 is unusual in that it still uses a hydro-mechanical flight control system, similar to the Boeing 707 and typical of the period, that transmits pilot commands to control surfaces by steel cables run through the fuselage and wings rather than by a fly-by-wire electrical system as used in all of the Airbus fleet and all later Boeing models. This has been raised as a safety issue because of the impracticality of duplicating such a mechanical cable-based system in the way that an electrical or electronic system can be. This leaves the flight controls as a single point of failure, for example, by metal fragments from an uncontained engine failure penetrating the wings or fuselage. The primary flight controls have mechanical backups. Total hydraulic system failure or double engine failure will automatically and seamlessly revert to control via servo tab. In this mode, the servo tabs aerodynamically control the elevators and ailerons, these servo tabs are in turn controlled by cables running to the control yoke. The pilot's muscle forces alone control the tabs. The 737 Next Generation series introduced a six-screen LCD glass cockpit with modern avionics but designed to retain crew commonality with previous 737 generations. The 737 MAX introduced a 415.1-inch landscape liquid crystal display screen cockpit manufactured by Rockwell Collins derived from the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. Except for the spoilers, which are fly-by-wire controlled and all the analog instruments becoming digital, everything else is similar to the cockpits of the previous 737 generations to maintain commonality. Aerodynamics of Boeing 737. The original minus 100 and minus 200 series were built without wingtip devices, but these were later introduced to improve fuel efficiency. The 737 has evolved into four winglet types. The 737 to 200 mini winglet, 737 classic NG blended winglet, 737 split scimitar winglet, and 737 max advanced technology winglet. The 737 to 200 mini winglets are part of the Quiet Wing Corp modification kit that received certification in 2005. Blended winglets were standard on the 737 NG and are available for retrofit on 737 classic models. These winglets stand approximately 8 feet or 2.4 meters tall and are installed at the wingtips. They improve fuel efficiency by up to 5% through lift-induced drag reduction by moderating wingtip vortices. Split scimitar winglets became available in 2014 for the 737 to 800, 737 to 900 er BBJ2, and BBJ3, and in 2015 for the 737 to 700, 737 to 900 BBJ1. Split scimitar winglets were developed by Aviation Partners, the same Seattle-based corporation that developed the blended winglets. The split scimitar winglets produce up to 5.5% fuel savings per aircraft compared to 3.3% savings for the blended winglets. Southwest Airlines flew their first flight of a 737-800 with split scimitar winglets on April 14, 2014. The next generation 737, 737 MAX, will feature an advanced technology winglet produced by Boeing. 
The Boeingert winglet resembles a cross between the blended winglet and the split scimitar winglet. An optional enhanced short runway package was developed for use on short runways. Interior of Boeing 737. The first generation original series 737 cabin was replaced for the second generation classic series with a design based on the Boeing 757 cabin. The classic cabin was then redesigned once more for the third, next generation, 737, based on the Boeing 777 cabin. Boeing later offered the redesigned Sky interior on the NG. The principal features of the Sky interior include, sculpted sidewalls, redesigned window housings, increased headroom and LED mood lighting, larger pivot bins based on the 777 and 787 designs, and generally more luggage space and claims to have improved cabin noise levels by 2 to 4 dB. The first 737 equipped Boeing Sky interior was delivered to Fly Dubai in late 2010. Continental Airlines, Alaska Airlines, Malaysia Airlines, and Tweefly have also received Sky interior equipped 737s. 737 Classic, or Second Generation. The Boeing 737 Classic is the name given to the 737 minus 304 hundredths, 500 series after introducing the minus 607 hundredths, 800 and 9 hundredths series of the Boeing 737 family. Produced from 1984 to 2000, 1988 Classic series were delivered close to the next major upgrade of single-aisle aircraft at Airbus and Boeing, jet fuel price peaked in 2008, when airlines devoted 40% of the retail price of an air ticket to pay for fuel, versus 15% in 2000. Consequently, in that year, carriers retired Boeing 737 Classic aircraft to reduce fuel consumption, Replacements consisted of more efficient 737 Next Generation or A320 family aircraft. On June 4, 2008, United Airlines announced it would retire all 94 of its classic 737 aircraft, or 647737 to 330737 to 500 aircraft, replacing them with A320 family jets taken from its TED subsidiary, which has been shut down. This intensified the competition between the two giant aircraft manufacturers, which has become a duopoly competition. An optional upgrade with winglets became available for the Classic and NG series. The 737-300 can be retrofitted with aviation partners Boeing winglets. The 737-300 retrofitted winglets are designated the minus 300 SP, or special performance. WestJet launched the 737-600 with winglets but dropped them in 2006. 737-300 Development began in 1979 for the 737's first major revision, introduced initially as the new generation of the 737. Boeing wanted to increase capacity and range, incorporating improvements to upgrade the aircraft to modern specifications while retaining commonality with previous 737 variants. In 1980, preliminary aircraft specifications of the variant dubbed 737-300, were released at the Farnborough Airshow. This first significant upgrade series was later renamed the 737 Classic Series. It competed primarily with MD-80, its later derivative MD-90, and the Airbus A320 family. Boeing engineer Mark Gregoire led a design team, which cooperated with CFM International to select, modify and deploy a new engine and nacelle that would make the 737 to 300 a viable aircraft they chose the cfm 56 to 3b minus one high bypass turbofan engine to power the aircraft which yielded significant gains in fuel economy and noise reduction and posed an engineering challenge given the low ground clearance of the 737 and the larger diameter of the engine over the original Pratt & Whitney engines. 
Gregoire's team and CFM solve the problem by reducing the size of the fan, placing the engine ahead of the wing, and moving engine accessories to the sides of the engine pod, giving the machine a distinctive non-circular, hamster pouch, air intake. Earlier customers for the CFM56 included the U.S. Air Force to re-engine KC-135 tankers. The passenger capacity of the aircraft was increased to 149 by extending the fuselage around the wing by 9 feet 5 inches, or 2.87 meters. The wing incorporated several changes for improved aerodynamics. The wingtip was developed 9 in, or 23 centimeters, and the wingspan by 1 foot 9 in, or 53 centimeters. The leading edge slats and trailing edge flaps were adjusted. The tailfin was redesigned, the flight deck was improved with the optional EFIS or electronic flight instrumentation system. The passenger cabin incorporated improvements similar to those developed on the Boeing 757. The prototype minus 300, the 1001st 737 built, first flew on February 24, 1984, with pilot Jim McRoberts. It and two production aircraft flew a nine-month-long certification program. The 737-300 retrofitted with aviation partners winglets was designated the minus 300 SP, or special performance. The 737-300 was replaced by the 737-700 of the next generation series. 737-400 the 737-400 was launched in 1985 to fill the gap between the 737-300 and the 757-200. In June 1986, Boeing announced the development of the 737-400, which stretched the fuselage a further 10 feet, or 3.0 meters, increasing the capacity to 188 passengers and requiring a tail bumper to prevent tail strikes during takeoff and a strengthened wing spar. The Minus 400's first flight was on February 19, 1988, and, after a seven-month, 500-hour flight testing run, entered service with Piedmont Airlines that October. The last two Minus 400's, the previous 737 Classics series, were delivered to CSA Czech Airlines on February 28, 2000. The 737-400 was replaced by the 737-800 of the next generation series. The 737-400 SF was a 737-400 converted to freighter, though it was not a model delivered by Boeing and hence the nickname Special Freighter, or SF. Alaska Airlines was the first to convert one of their 400s from regular service to an aircraft with the ability to handle 10 pallets. The airline had also converted five more inter-fixed combi aircraft for half-passenger and freight. These 737-400 combi aircraft were retired in 2017 and replaced by the 737-700F of the next generation series. 737-500. The 737-500 was offered as a modern and direct replacement of the 737-200. It was launched in 1987 by Southwest Airlines, with an order for 20 aircraft, and it flew for the first time on June 30, 1989. A single prototype flew 375 hours for the certification process, and on February 28, 1990, Southwest Airlines received the first delivery. The Minus 500 incorporated the improvements of the 737 Classic Series, allowing longer routes with fewer passengers to be more economical than with the 737-300. The fuselage length of the 737-500 is 1 foot 7 in, or 48 centimeters longer than the 737-200, accommodating up to 140 passengers. Both glass and older-style mechanical cockpits arrangements were available. 
using the CFM 56-3 engine also gave a 25% increase in fuel efficiency over the older 737-200s P and W engines. The 737-500 has faced accelerated retirement due to its smaller size, after 21 years in service compared to 24 years for the minus 300. While a few 737-300s were slated for freighter conversion, no demand at all existed for a minus 500 freighter conversion. The 737-500 was replaced by the 737-600 of the next generation series, though the minus 600 was not as successful in total orders as the minus 500. Other variants of Boeing 737, 737 AEW and C. The Boeing 737 AEW and C is a 737 to 700 IGW, roughly similar to the 737 to 700 ER. This is an airborne early warning and control version of the 737 NG. Australia is the first customer, followed by Turkey and South Korea. T-43, CT-43A. The T-43 was a 737-200 modified for the United States Air Force to train navigators, now known as USAF Combat Systems Officers. Informally referred to as the Gator and Flying Classroom, 19 of these aircraft were delivered to the Air Training Command at Mather AFB, California, between 1973 and 1974. Two additional aircraft were delivered to the Colorado Air National Guard at Buckley ANGB and Peterson AFB, Colorado, in direct support of cadet air navigation training at the nearby U.S. Air Force Academy. Two T-43s were later converted to CT-43As, similar to the CT-40A clipper below, in the early 1990s and transferred to Air Mobility Command and United States Air Forces in Europe, respectively, as executive transports. A third aircraft was also assigned to Air Force Material Command as a radar testbed aircraft and was redesignated as an NT-43A. The T-43 was retired by the Air Education and Training Command in 2010 after 37 years of service. C-40 Clipper. The Boeing C-40 Clipper is a military version of the 737-700 CNG. It is used by both the United States Navy and the United States Air Force and is ordered by the United States Marine Corps. Technically, only the Navy C-40A variant is named Clipper, whereas the USAF C-40B, C variants are officially unnamed. P-8 Poseidon. The P-8 Poseidon was developed for the United States Navy by Boeing Defense, Space and Security, based on the next generation 737-800 ERX. The P-8 can be operated in anti-submarine, anti-surface, and shipping interdiction roles. It is armed with torpedoes, harpoon anti-ship missiles, and other weapons. It can drop and monitor sonoboys and operate in conjunction with other assets such as the Northrop Grumman MQ-4C Triton Maritime Surveillance Unmanned Aerial Vehicle. Boeing Business Jet. In the late 1980s, Boeing marketed the 777-33 Jet, a business jet version of the 737-300. The name was short-lived. After introducing the next generation series, Boeing introduced the Boeing Business Jet series. The BBJ-1 was similar in dimensions to the 737-700 but had additional features, including stronger wings and landing gear from the 737-800, and had increased range over the other 737 models through extra fuel tanks. The first BBJ rolled out on August 11, 1998, and flew for the first time on September 4. On October 11, 1999, Boeing launched the BBJ-2. The 737-800 is 19 feet 2 inches, or 5.84 meters longer than the BBJ, 
with a slightly reduced range of 25% more cabin space and twice the baggage space. It is also fitted with auxiliary belly fuel tanks and winglets. The first BBJ-2 was delivered on February 28, 2001. Boeing's BBJ-3 is based on the 737-900ER. The BBJ-3 has 1,120 square feet, or 104 meters of floor space, 35% more interior space, and 89% more luggage space than the BBJ-2. It has an auxiliary fuel system, giving it a range of up to 4,725 nautical miles, or 8,751 kilometers, and a head-up display. Boeing completed the first example in August 2008. This aircraft's cabin is pressurized to a simulated 6,500 foot, or 2,000 meters altitude. Boeing Converted Freighter Program The Boeing Converted Freighter Program, or the 737-800 BCF program, was launched by Boeing in 2016. It converts old 737-800 passenger jets to dedicated freighters. The first 737-800 BCF was delivered in 2018 to GECAS, leased to West Atlantic. Boeing has signed an agreement with Chinese YTO Cargo Airlines to provide the airline with 737-800 BCFs pending a planned program launch. Competition of Boeing 737 The Boeing 737 Classic, Next Generation, and MAX series have faced significant competition from the Airbus A320 family, first introduced in 1988. The relatively recent Airbus A220 family also competes against the smaller capacity end of the 737 variants. The A320 was developed to contend also with the McDonnell Douglas MD-8090 and 95 series, the 95 later became the Boeing 717. Since July 2017, Airbus had a 59.4% market share of the re-engined single-aisle market, while Boeing had 40.6%. Boeing had doubts on over-ordered A320neos by new operators and expected to narrow the gap with replacements not already ordered. However, in July 2017, Airbus still had 1,350 more A320neo orders than Boeing had for the 737 MAX. Boeing delivered 8,918 of the 737 families between March 1988 and December 2018, while Airbus delivered 8,605 A320 family aircraft over a similar period since the first delivery in early 1988. Operators of Boeing 737 as of August 2021, the five most prominent were operated Boeing 737 were Southwest Airlines, Ryanair, United Airlines, American Airlines, and Delta Air Lines. Civilian. In 2006, over 4,500 Boeing 737s were operated by more than 500 airlines, flying to 1,200 destinations in 190 countries, and on average, 1,250 aircraft were airborne, with two either departing or landing every five seconds. The 737 was the most commonly flown aircraft in 2008, 2009, and 2010. In 2013, over 5,580 Boeing 737s were operated by more than 342 airlines in 111 countries, representing more than 25% of the worldwide fleet of large jet airliners. The 737 had carried 16.8 billion passengers over 119 billion miles with more than 184 million flights or 264 million hours in the air. In 2016, there were 6,512 Boeing 737 airliners in service, more than the 6,510 Airbus A320 family. While in 2017, there were 6, 858,737s in service, fewer than the 6,965 A320 families. 
As of June 2021, despite being the world's most delivered airliner, 9,315 Boeing 737s were in service, slightly fewer than the 9,353 A320 families, as more 737s were already out of service. Orders and deliveries of Boeing 737. The 737 had the highest cumulative orders for any airliner until surpassed by the A320 family in October 2019. 737 orders dropped by 90% that year, as 737 MAX orders dried up after the March grounding. The 737 MAX backlog fell by 182, mainly due to the Jet Airways bankruptcy. Boeing's airliner backlog drop was a first in at least the past 30 years. As of January 2022, 15,068 units of the Boeing 737 family had been ordered, with 4,162 orders were pending, or 3,441 when including, additional criteria for recognizing contracted backlog with customers beyond the existence of a firm contract. Boeing delivered the 5,737 to Southwest Airlines on February 13, 2006, the 6,737 to Norwegian Air Shuttle in April 2009, the 7,737 to Fly Dubai on December 16, 2011, the 8,737 to United Airlines on April 16, 2014, and the 9,737 to China United Airlines in April 2016. The 10,737 was ordered in July 2012, rolled out on March 13, 2018, and delivered to Southwest Airlines, the backlog stood at over 4,600 aircraft. As of January 2022, 10,906 units of the Boeing 737 family had been delivered, while 10,200 of the competing A320 family had been delivered. Accidents and incidents of Boeing 737. As of January 2021, there have been 502 aviation accidents and incidents involving all 737 aircraft, including 218 hull losses resulting in a total of 5,585 fatalities. A Boeing analysis of commercial jet airplane accidents between 1959 and 2013 found that the hull loss rate for the original series was 1.75 per million departures, for the classic series 0.54, and the next generation series. During the 1990s, Rudder issues on Series-200 and-300 aircraft resulted in multiple incidents. In two total loss accidents, United Airlines Flight 585 and USF Flight 427, the pilots lost control of the aircraft following a sudden and unexpected deflection of the rudder, killing everyone aboard, a total of 157 people. Similar rudder issues led to a temporary loss of control on at least five other 737 flights before the problem was ultimately identified. The National Transportation Safety Board determined that the accidents and incidents resulted from a design flaw that could result in an uncommanded movement of the aircraft's rudder. As a result of the NTSB's findings, the Federal Aviation Administration ordered that the rudder servo valves be replaced on all 737s. It mandated new training protocols for pilots to handle an unexpected movement of control surfaces. Following two 737 MAX 8 aircraft crashes, Lion Air Flight 610 in October 2018 and Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 in March 2019, which caused 346 deaths, National Aviation Authorities worldwide grounded the 737 MAX series. On December 16, 2019, Boeing announced that it would suspend production of the 737 MAX from January 2020. Production of the MAX series resumed on May 27, 2020. This is all about today. Thank you for watching this video full if you want, you can visit our channel and watch more videos. If you like this video, I will say again subscribe to this channel.